Hello and welcome to our channel, Jetro Startup. I'm Daiki Nakajima, Director of Business Development from Jetro New York. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Ms. Chizuko Kosenki, CEO of Tag6 Biotechnologies. Tag6 Biotechnologies is a promising drug delivery startup that delivers the next generation of drugs at lower cost and higher quality through oligonucleotide aptamer based therapies. Uh, in September 2022, uh, they concluded a licensing agreement with over 5 billion yen, which accounts to approximately $40 million uh, with Cage Bio Inc., a U.S. biotechnology company, and continues to expand their business in the U.S. So, as I'm sure the viewers would love to hear from her directly, let's explore Tag6 experience and approach on what it takes to expand their business in the U.S. So, Kosek san Welcome to Jetro Startup's YouTube channel. It is a pleasure to have you here today. Uh, this is my first uh, episode to interview someone on this channel, so I'm very excited as well. And uh, viewers, please bear with me as I try to make this uh, engaging as possible. Um, so let us start with a little introduction from you. And essentially, how did this all start? How did it all start, really? Okay. Um, actually, I'm not the uh, original founder of Tag6 Biotechnologies. Um, a founder of this company was uh, Dr. Ichiro Hiro, who invented this uh, great technology, unnatural base bed technologies, in Tokyo University and the Riken Research Institute. Um, the company was founded in 2007, and the first nearly 10 years, the uh, team was trying to do different business. I came in this company in 2017 and uh, I thought we should change the business model. So I rewrote the business model and then um, trying to raise money. Of course, we need the money to, to develop uh, technology and the uh, uh, candidates. So originally, it was uh, trying to do a uh, selling reagent, research reagent, and more to do with um, tagging the money, notes, to trace through the money. That was the original business. Then in 2017, we changed it to the drug discovery company. So I became a CEO and raised money since then. We came to a preclinical stage company now. Did I give you a right answer? No, you did. That's amazing. So you came in halfway. Essentially, you were the founder and you just decided to discover this, which is pretty uh, amazing in that sense. Uh, I'm actually interested in what led you to decide, look, I, I need to take this over. I have to do it. Academic research technology to make it uh, industrialized, you know, commercialized. You need... Um, great strategy, you know, risk-taking strategy and the financing. The technology we used in the same from beginning. And this technology can be applied to many ways, not only drug uh, discovery, but many ways. One day in the future, we should try the other ways as well. But I thought was to start with to look at the investment side, it's great uh, um, future. It's upside, great upside. And the he help people's health. I like that. You know, I like uh, using my skill to make uh, great innovative technology to help people's health. That's what I wanted. So I came in. That's, I mean, that's a wonderful thing to, I mean, it's, it's very, very, um, impressive in that sense, uh, given how difficult this industry is. Now, fast forward a little bit. Um, you've developed your company, you're, you've created a, uh, an established startup uh, in Japan, and now all of a sudden you tried to go, you decided to go outside of Japan. Tell me a little bit about also, what made the decision to say, look, I might need to start expanding to the U.S. or other foreign countries, okay. for us, U.S. specific. But if you can give us a little uh, insight into that as well, I'd appreciate it. Well, certainly, yes. Uh, that's a, a great question. Thank you. 
Uh, from beginning, I thought was we can't stay only in Japan. The biotechnology is not restricted to country to country. It's available, should be available to everybody. You know, medicines also. Um, Business-wise, stay looking at only Japan is very limited. Our client, perhaps uh, I'd like to talk later, our partners are bigger pharmaceutical companies who are able to make our seed drug to real drug in the market. And our partner candidates are not restricted to Japan. We need to look at outside of Japan greatly, no, no borders between. So from beginning, I am not looking at only Japan, just, just no border everywhere. China, Europe, US. The biggest market is the US, of course. That's why. Did you have a specific lead or a customer, a potential customer that made you decide, you know, oh, we have to take a look at US? Along that sort of line, when did Jetro come into the picture? Um, particularly this first partner in the U.S. we have chosen is we didn't have any other choice actually, really. Because this partner in the U.S. is a spin out of U.S. university and has um, proprietary unique technology only one in the world. So we had to partner with them together with our technology and with theirs combined. So from that sense, we already spotted them in the US. We wanted to work with them, but how to approach them? We didn't know anybody in the company. We didn't know them from publications, but uh, through Jetro's support, we attended the partnering uh, conference, then could meet them face to face. So that's how it worked. So Jetro gave us an um, opportunity to, to meet them directly. How important do you think, you know, learning to speak publicly or, you know, let's say in Zoom or web for this case, but when you're pitching, how do you think, how important is it to understand the difference and the techniques that you use when you pitch to a U.S. Uh, customer. Do you think that's very important to sort of attract more uh, customers and investors? I believe it is really important. Really important. Um, I don't want to criticize the, the Japanese way. I like that was as well. Um, how to start in, in to, towards the U.S. It's more per, person to person. It kind of, um, interaction, more personal interaction from beginning. More relaxing, talk about private thing, you know, all sort of ways. In Japan, it's more like corporate. You can't express yourself to me. So it's more official, not too much relaxing, and, and you can't express your private life to me. And in the U.S., you build up the personal uh, trust, person to person, then, then go to more decision comes from that person, a person. The Japan side is more corporate, the uh, famous ringi system. So you can't, the first person we talk to, even in, we impress them, him, he will hard, but decision comes from somewhere. You know, having uh, seen so many pitches and having uh, been able to train for so many years, uh, seeing a lot of these startups, I think it's, that's one of the most important aspects, and and I'm I'm glad that uh, you know you you felt the same way as that. There is a need to to educate more on that, um, which is which is you know a, a work in progress, but we certainly um, try hard. Going back to your business, um, 
So you're in such a interesting market industry. Um, what, so what are, you know, the challenges, uh, you face during global expansion, uh, you know, and of course your niche company, very, you know, a unique area, but there are so many other unique, uh, industries out there for Japanese corporations to, to, uh, approach. So, you know, I'm in more than intrigued to know what your challenges, what you face during these global expansions. I don't want to talk about my, too much about the financial side, but certainly as everybody's aware of, as uh, we are loss making venture company startups, financial side is uh, critical. And in Japan, um, financial support, the, the, the size, size of financial support to the startups are much, much smaller than compared to the U.S. size. So then that gives us like a hard time, resource-wise, we can't spend too much time and effort uh, employing people, uh, spending time, and show them how our old <laughs> data, our backed up financial, you know, backup, everything to, to, in a way, compete with the U.S. partner. Because if we don't have financial power, they will negotiation, negotiation uh, uh, power, we, we will lose negotiation power. They know that we are weak, we have a weakness. Not, not only that reason though, to globalize, we need power. Financially, resource-wise, patent-wise, so many things. You know, interesting. Um, so investors are now, uh, they worry about the valuation of a startup company and uh, right. In the U.S., a lot of times companies are overvalued, uh, but I get asked a lot, um, how are Japanese startups valued? Do you think that when a VC, a foreign VC, comes into uh, or meets with you and they, you know, they would they come expecting a overvaluated company or do you think that Japanese companies are undervalued to a foreign VC and should be more uh, uh, aggressive with that valuation? Thank you for asking that. Um, Japanese academics have great science technologies, the seas, and who should evaluate that? So those ones. That's perhaps so far missing in the past. Uh, because um, experienced people, there aren't many experienced people to evaluate the great seas innovated technologies. It's a changing now. It's it's much better now because I've been seeing this for about 20, 30 years. So it's a changing and the catching up to the US. Um, having said that, fund size is m much smaller and venture capitals are not taking great risk, small or portfolio weight, you know. One, one of the hundreds may come up that sort of way. So not uh, um, investing to uh, truly risky new technology, innovative technology to make it to the success unicorn mm -hmm. like that. So that's a uh, 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 quite frust frustrating situation. I mean, I, w I wish we can find ways to make that better. <laughs> yeah, that right, would be actually. very great. Um, uh, quite a scary thing to take risk and, and foreseeing which one becomes a great uh, success. I guess any other messages to those companies, the startups? you know, that are uh, trying to do the same like you and getting customers and essentially opening 
uh, having a presence uh, in the U.S. Always don't be pessimistic. Be optimistic. Have a global view. Don't restrict to us narrow down to area. That's me. Maybe from beginning, very early time, we should concentrate on the local local area and the build a faster step that should go global sizable way. Uh, but shouldn't forget whole world in any moment. That's I'd like to say. Thank you. No. We are still not succeeded <laughs> yet. We need to make a big effort. We haven't uh, opened the uh, operator operation in the US yet. The hope one day we'll be able to. What is your outlook for 2023 and then beyond? Well, we are in a critical time, you know. We become, since uh, I joined this company now six years, and they become uh, really for scalable. Gradually uh, become um, developed drug, drug in a way of drug development will become preclinical stage and ready to start clinical trials soon this year. This year. So that's a really wow. big step. Congratulations. Then, um, yeah, thank you. That's a great moment. But to be successful, it's a risky drug development. So to make sure not only one, we need some portfolio to following up fast one, that we need a bigger finance support, financial support. But to do that, we need to show our capability and the results. And not only Japan, that's what we'd like to show uh, to the global audience pharmaceutical investors, uh, like general people support us or can see Tag6 is doing a great job, then want to support us more. So in the many ways, this year, next couple of years for us, it's an exciting moment, but critical to go further, bigger operation business. kozak thank you very much for your time today. We uh, truly appreciate giving us your guidance, you know, your advice and your experience, um, you know, coming into the U.S. market. Uh, you know, we have nothing but um, great uh, joy for you to, you know, be expanding and, you know, doing well and having an ambitious goal, uh, you know, as you penetrate this U.S. market. And please know that Jetro, we will still be continuing to support this as much as we can. And we are always going to be, you know, supporting any uh, Japanese startups that enter the U.S. So uh, we appreciate your time and thank you for um, this uh, precious moment. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed talking to you. Thanks. Thank you.